Hello everyone! How's it going? It's Vasco from the Angular University. Welcome! Welcome to the NGRX Reactive Extensions Architecture course. In this course, we are going to learn how to build an application from top to bottom from an empty folder using the NGRX store and the store design pattern or paradigm in general. We are going to learn about the Flux architecture. We are going to learn what problem it's designed to solve. We are going to learn about the original Facebook counter problem, that famous bug that occurred a couple of years ago in Facebook itself. We are going to learn all about it. We are going to learn how the Facebook team fixed it and how it originated this modern application architecture. We are going to learn how the original Flux architecture gave origin to single store architectures like Redux and NGRX store. We are going then to reproduce the same problem that the Facebook team was solving. We are going to build from scratch, from an empty folder, a chat application, a multi-user chat application, where you will be able to have several users interacting in a chat room, several threads, several users associated to different threads. We are going to see the famous Facebook counter problem and we are going to see how a store-like architecture, a single store architecture, really helps to tackle this kind of user interfaces. We are going to go from the empty folder, build the application step by step. The way that we are going to structure this course is the following. First, a brief architecture introduction, because we need to give some context on what is this single store architecture and what are the benefits. We are going to present the Facebook counter problem and after this brief initial introduction, we are going to dive straight into the code. We are going to start to build the chat application from an empty folder, set up the NGRX store as soon as possible, cover NGRX effects as soon as possible, cover the separation between the view and view model, what type of data we want to put in the store and why, how to derive view models from the store data. We are going to cover all of that in this initial section where we will build the core of our application. In this initial section, as soon as it's practical, we are going to introduce the NGRX dev tools. We are going to see how can we better debug our programs using a Chrome development extension that will allow us to time travel through our application. We are going to be able to put our application into any given state, go back and forth between the multiple states of our front end. We are going to cover all the usual concepts associated with store solutions, like for example, reducer functions, actions, how to dispatch an action. We are going to see what is a selector, how to use the NGRX effects library, and we will also introduce a small debugging utility for RxJS applications in general to complement the dev tools. So at this point in the course, you will already have a running chat application and you will also have a good overview of what are the strengths, what are the strong points of store-based solutions, when to use them and why, to which problems do they apply and how do we design an application from top to bottom using a library like NGRX store. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to do a guided tour on the NGRX ecosystem in general. We're going to cover the integration with IndexedDB via the NGRX DB module. We are going to cover immutability. We are going to cover how immutability leverages the use of on push change detection and what are the advantages and disadvantages of using that and when should we use that and why. We are going to cover the integration between NGRX store and the router. So we are going to go library by library, giving the finishing touches to our chat application. Now, because this is a full stack architecture course, we are also going to cover the backend, namely backend design and what would the REST endpoint look like if it was designed and created from scratch to go along with this type of single store architecture. 
we are going to use a backend that is already ready to go during our course so that we can focus on the NGRX library ecosystem. So you will start the implementation from an empty folder, but from the moment that we need to do an HTTP call, we are going to check out a backend from an existing branch. And the course will go on using the existing backend. Then at the end, we are going to cover how that backend was implemented. But the first part of the course is all about NGRX Store and its library ecosystem. So without further ado, let's get started with the introductory architecture section. And what we're going to do is we are going to start at the beginning. What was the famous Facebook counter bug? We are going to cover that. We are going to see what was the main problem what was the main situation for which a new architecture type emerged. We are going to cover the Flux architecture. We are going to talk a little bit about unidirectional data flow, what it is, why it's such a great property to have in an application. We are also going to talk about what typically does not work when we face something like the Facebook counter problem, which is global event bus systems. We are going to cover what is the problem with that type of solution and why that's not supported out of the box in Angular by design. I mean Angular 2 or above. Without further ado, let's get going. Let's learn in the next section what is the Facebook counter problem. It's coming right up. <laughs> 